Don't even start it, boaster. Boasting and bragging. And I think we're live. All right. What's up, y'all? Hopefully the sound won't go crazy. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to pop this chat out. I think I'm going to put this one up here. And this. Let's see here. Pop chat out. All right, we got some chat popping out. And I don't know what's going on here. Hold on a second, y'all. I'm trying to figure this out myself here. All right, can everybody hear me and see me? Oh my God, these little flies are killing me. This building needs to do something about that. It's driving me insane. You're coming at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Isn't uh, the housekeeping coming? Stupid little flight. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> All right. So, um, today, yeah, I know. Apparently, there's some uh, storage unit in the basement that has all these flies or standing water or something. And we live just above it. There's an office below us that either has it or the parking underneath has it. Tina, Tina says she hears nothing. You might want to turn your speakers up. All right, the Phoenix class is live. All right, well, we got a Phoenix class available now, you guys. October 21 and 22. I need to put that on my calendar. What's up, everybody? What's up? Yeah, I know, Ocean. They're so disgusting. All right, so... Might as well get this one out of the way. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, and it's one of the ways that I kind of taught myself um, how to get comfortable painting eyes and nose and mouths and faces. Um, what I'm going to be doing today, we're just going to do probably the whole thing um, down to spraying, maybe doing some pour. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do it on this table. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Trudy, they're bad. Those little flies are bad. Um, and you guys know what? I got these on Amazon. I don't think we have them on our thing, though. Um, I got these, a hundred of these, for $11. And you know how expensive these are. These are like normally like 40 or like 50 bucks for like a pack of 100 well, thank you, Miss Bouvier. Um, one of the first, and I think it's kind of a backwards thing, but this is how my art teacher uh, basically told us how, or it was a, it was basically a. Ooh, did you guys hear that? I hope that wasn't live. 
screenshot that. Um, what we did in like junior high, he our, our teacher told us to cut it in half, put this down, put it on a piece of paper, and then just draw the other half. Um, that was fun. I, I literally remember doing that. And, uh, but uh, I never did it after that. I mean, I think I played around with it just because it was fun, you know, and it's always intimidating drawing faces and whatnot. Um, but what I started doing was when I moved here, I was doing airbrush and I wasn't doing any faces. And the guy that pretty much um, held my hand and was bearing with me because he, he was very busy. He had two shops in the West End. One of them, which was an airbrush t-shirt shop, he had stencils of a face that he'd cut out just the dark parts. And I thought, why not do that with magazines and just practice like that? So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to make it easier for you guys because I used to just go and just cut out the dark parts, you know, where I, what I wanted to see when I would paint. And then... I started to think, why don't, why don't I just outline it? And then when you outline it with the Sharpie, you turn it over and you get just those dark parts. And then you cut those out and then you spray this on. And then you have your other one here and you have your reference. So I'm just gonna draw what I think is important. Um, what's important, the dark parts where everything, what I think that, you know, the, the, from the distance, the size, you know, what is important about a face that makes a face look like it? Um, and it's basically what I do when I, if I project up something, is I'll just get the basic, where this part is, this line, this line, where the eyebrow starts, where it ends, and then kind of a, a dotted line to where, you know, you make your eyebrows and all the way down so I'm just going to do that um, make sure this works good and remember these do bleed a little so kind of go fast you can also do it with the big sharpie if you just want to do one line and then cut that line out I'm, I'm gonna do more of a outline I'm going to make this a little bit more, she's going to be kind of mermaid-ish, so that's what we're going to do here. And if my hat gets them, you know what, I'm going to turn it around. What's up, JJ? Thank you, Doris, very much. So I'm just going to start, I normally start with the eyes, and you can see, normally it works better with the black and white photo. You can get those those lines that are a definite thing, and and I always tell people um, I've shown a couple people how to airbrush. You know what to do, what not to do, um, and I always tell them if you don't think it matters, it really does. So if you see like a um, a, a little, you know, you're doing an eyebrow and you. You like this little part here, you like it here where it goes straight and then turns. Don't just curve that. Make it straight and then curve it. Like, it matters. Everything matters. Um, and if you're worried about doing full circles and, and having stuff cut out, just what I'll show you here is what you'll do is you'll just do some of the eye, stop, turn around. And you can, you're going to always paint this in, so don't worry about the highlights. Do the rest of your dark, get the inside of the eye, you're tracing, you're tracing, and then you stop. So you're not fully connecting that. So this isn't one whole piece, you know, and this falls out. So, and you can do that to a lot of different places. So what you're going to do, and remember, this is just a shadow. So just imagine these are all eyelashes right here. 
So we're going to make some fun big eyelashes. And remember, you can always fill these in later if you are literally trying to draw this person. And the same with this little eyelid line. Just do a little one. Maybe do a line here, a line here. See? And you just got a nice little outline of, of what you're going to be cutting out. You literally could probably stop here and then start it or just leave it. Just cut it out to here because you can paint that in. You just want the definition. You just want what makes a face look like a face. Um, and this little eyelid, there's a little piece here. And this matters a lot. So what I like to do is just do just a little one. Bring it up to that eyelash. Maybe make one or two eyelashes here. And do this more of a dash. Put a couple eyelashes there. But you're just dashing these out. And this little shadow where the eye bulges. Give me a little... Give you one little line. Don't don't make it a solid. Say just a little bit like that. Tattoo artists do this a lot too. They'll do dotted lines when they do their transfers. I like to make this one. And then when you're doing a, a stencil like this, just go ahead and give you a kind of a sketch of where the eyebrow is. You're going to cut that out. You don't have to fill that in if you don't want to. Like I said, this is just going to be for an underwater. Did I even say that for an underwater thing? <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and work on what you're working on. See, some of these little eyelashes start this way. Up, up. There's one in the little fridge. Well, the kind that I like. And sometimes if you're if you're doing this is what I mean when when I say, let me bring this in. When I say if you don't think it matters, this is the stuff that matters. It's very difficult to see, but that's where your 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 nose and your eyes, your, your, your eyebrows meet. There's, it's a little dip in. You can see it here. I'm not telling you to cut this out, but if you're painting a portrait, make sure you make this. Make sure you make a little bit. Just imagine the skull underneath. Your skull is basically making that shadow. For doing something like this, I would just do the dark parts. That's all you're wanting to do is just the dark parts. Not trying to get into the the crazy um, advanced stuff. Somebody's here to say hi. Hey y'all. Um, let's get this little part. Now remember, always cut thin. Let's see what it looks like so far. There you go. Look at that. You got yourself some eyeballs. Oh, hi, Bowie. What are you doing down there? 
Let me hold on. I'm going to read some of these, you guys. I'm sorry, I haven't been paying attention. I can't. How do I grab this? Jeff, I was showing my daughter your Marilyn Lucy Tiffany video last night. We were blown away. Watch. Well, thank you, baby cakes. I appreciate that. Um, no, Miss Bouvier, it's not. It's just a, a printed out photo that I got from Pinterest. I just printed out just a, a rough draft. You can see it's kind of pixelated. Um, it's just it's just a really high definition photo. Um, I literally print it on the lowest quality because I don't want my ink to, you know, use up all this ink. Let's see here. Um, I want to say hello to everybody that's coming on in. I appreciate it. Sorry if I'm not talking. Um, Erica will be over here in a second. She's doing uh, finishing up inventory and whatnot. Diane Koss, is that how to say that? I posted two new videos on my channel for my 20 faithful followers. Hey, you just wait. 20? That's amazing. You're doing amazing. Just take your time. Don't don't expect stuff. Just, you know, just take your time. People will know. People will know that you're genuine and that you're you're doing this for you. And you're doing this for everybody else too. That's why we do it. We, we, we post videos so people can learn. All right. Um, everybody says hi, Erica. JJ, Vamp, Petra. Teresa, what's happening? Kara, what's happening? Resin up with Kim, what's happening? All right, I'm going to finish this uh, her nose up. If you just joined, we're just we're just doing an outline of a face, um, just the dark parts. I'm kind of showing you just the easy way to. Um, you can do this with somebody's photo. If, if you if, if somebody says, hey, will you paint my daughter? Will you paint my kid? Will you paint my dog? This is the perfect way to, to get a good uh, reference, you know, to get a, a good print of it. You see that? Like, all you do is just get the main important dark parts and you'll be good. All right. The nose is a little tricky. Um, obviously, you want to get these these little guys here but remember the nose there's there's really no straight lines on a nose and a lot of people make the mistake of when they're drawing a nose they'll they'll literally draw this line and they'll draw this line and this is not a line this is a curved this is a curved area that's what makes a baby so hard to paint i i i painted maybe one baby in my life and i i didn't like doing it um, cause they're just so soft and there's no hard lines. Um, but we're going to do that today. We're going to, we're going to draw this line. That's just because I want to get just this part. And I'll show you when I cut it out that it's, it's, uh, a must. So you get that right, you know, the right portion, I guess you could say. What you're going to do is you're literally just going to do that. That's all you're getting from the nose. Because that's all you need. You need the dark part. You need this part right here. If there was a bigger shadow, I would literally just trace. You know what? I'm going to do that because this is a pretty good sized shadow. I'm just going to go like this. There's a shadow here that I can see that always makes a nose look like a, a nose. And I'm just going to cut all this out. Because this is a... Sh it's more of a artsy way to, to paint a face. Mm, artsy fartsy. And you see these parts right here, these shadows? You can put those in there if you want. It's not necessary. 
I don't mind painting, cutting these little guys out just to give a little bit of a, to where from here to here, if you're drawing it, you can, you know, you have a point from A to B. Um, and if I don't like them, I won't cut them out. But it looks like I might, I might like those. But this is what's fun to me to painting a nose, especially when I'm doing airbrush or um, charcoal because there's so much, there's so much detail in here. And this is another thing. If you don't think it matters, it does. All this little shadow, all this highlight, this little bridge right here, this little, there's some dark, there's some light. There's a whole light part right here. All right, so let's move on to the mouth. This is kind of a tricky one too, because you don't want it to look like She's just got this open mouth. This is a lot of shadow right here. Like her mouth is just about closed. So if you're comfortable, I would just draw the under, just trace this under part of her lip. You know how it kind of goes up. Goes down a little bit there. And then there's a little part here where the lip, I don't know how to explain this, but the lip, the chin and the lip kind of grow together here. There's a part of the lip that you definitely need to cut out here. And one right here, obviously the bottom of the lip. And remember, this is a, a artsy piece. <laughs> So we're just gonna go with that shadow. We're just gonna trace that shadow. And then there's that other one that we get. I could probably cut that out a little bit more. Let's just go here with this. Just make a couple indentions. Don't just make a smiley face cut. You know, you can make it like it's how the lip is it's kind of what is it called bouncy I don't know Fleptuous. yeah voluptuous if you wanted you can just cut all that out if you wanted this is an artsy piece so I wouldn't worry about that hey Wade um, sorry I didn't get to call you back yet I just got on to my um, back office today when you called me and we talked on the phone about your order and I couldn't log in, I, I couldn't log in until just now today. So if you've ordered over the weekend, since Friday really, it hasn't gone out yet, it's going out today. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna like that. So you can turn it over and kind of get a look at it. I think I'm going to connect this though. I don't know if I like that as separate. Yeah. And that's just as much, you know, that's that determines on how much detail you want to put in your piece. You can cut out all these little spots. You can cut out all this detail if you want. I'm just going to cut out the dark parts today. Stick with your plan. <laughs> plan it and then stick it. All right, so now... I just had a shiver and I shook. It looks like we have an earthquake on the camera. All right. So let's go over what we're going to cut out. I hope this isn't too boring for you guys. I just, I want to do something different and I'm trying to get back into my art and I figured this is something fun and different that you guys can get into and it'll definitely help you out with your portrait work or if you just want to make you know, something different in, in some resin. You 
You don't have to color it in if you don't want. Why does it sound like you're getting into something you shouldn't be? What are you doing? Is that good? Is that for Bowie? Mm -hmm. Not Bowie. I love this. It's not boring at all. Diane makes all of her own stencils. It was so great to see you too, Kim. Congrats on your win of the scratch offs. I want to say congrats to Megan Hopkins for her piece for uh, Just Resins Challenge. That was a great piece. That was super nice, super classy looking. I don't know if she's in here right now. I don't think she is. JJ but... said I'm fixated. Sherry says it's so worth the, the time. Miss Bouvier, love it. It's what I do. Ocean says, plan your work and work your plan. Ocean loves it. Ocean, we need to set up a class out there. <gasps> that would be so awesome. What do you think about that? Then we can pour on a surfboard. What? That would be fun. I would show everybody Bowie, but last time we did that, he decided he was going to turn something off. We're on. We're off. Oh, bless you. All right, I think this all this stuff is pretty explanatory here. So if you guys just got in the room, we're just making a stencil to transfer to a underwater ocean pour, I guess you could say. Kind of like a mermaid face, a siren, if you will. Um, and if you guys didn't hear, we just set a date for um, Phoenix. Phoenix. I think I want to put a little line up this way. Just kind of give her that. What kind of paper did you print that on? This Just regular paper. old paper. That's it. Just regular old printer paper. That's it. It looks decent on camera, but it's it's very pixelated. If that shows up. But I love this because it shows. I mean, it shows you all the different highlights and all the different uh, shadows and curves. And this is something you could do. You could just take a white. You could. This is how you could make a stencil of like three different layers. Just take a paint pen and paint in all the white, all those little highlights. And then take a gray one and then outline all those light grays and then a black. Cut each one of those out on three different sheets of paper. You have yourself a stencil there. All right, so I'm just going to cut this stuff out. Sam says I have a few ideas for Virginia classes when you do an East Coast tour. If you guys find us a venue that will host at least 15 people that will let us keep our paintings there overnight and can handle heat guns going off simultaneously and you think that there's enough of a market there shoot us an email it's never too soon to start a different part of the country tour I know that might look weird, but I'm going to kind of get you in there. Um, kind of show you how I cut this stuff out. Petra is working on getting us sponsors to come to, like, the Netherlands. Oh, man, that would be amazing. Because Saskia is there, Petra is there. I'm pretty sure Anne-Marie Ritterhoff is in the area.
So the Sharpie leaks through to the back. How cool. Would never have thought that. So if you get like a super high grade expensive paper, it may not leak through. So just use regular old printer paper. That's it. That's all you need. Um, and then when you, when you want to make a stencil that works really well, just get some really thin plastic and get a stencil burner. And this is exactly the same way you make a stencil out of plastic. You do this, put the plastic over it, tape it to the plastic, and then just burn your plastic, your stencil, right out of that. And that is one perfect way to make you a really nice last landing stencil, unless you're really rough with them. So I'm not really good with stencils because I don't take care of things very well. But you know what? The first step is admitting you have a problem. And just take your time. You don't, you don't want to... You don't want to rush it because then you'll start skipping areas and you're like, nah, I don't want to do this or you'll... Don't get lazy. Just cut everything out that you traced. You, you, it's, it has to be done. It's going to get done. Like I always say, tomorrow's going to come. So. How do you think UPO paper would work for a stencil? Actually, it's very interesting that you just mentioned that, Diane, because I just ordered a something. What's it called? I don't know why. You got a... Uh... A soldering gun. Yeah. One of those. But it's not soldering. It's Yeah, it's a soldering gun, is what it said. Oh. You you I got one of those. And we're gonna use it to try to make stencils with you put paper. Because we have one. <laughs> that's, oh. that's why I don't I was wondering why. It was like eighteen bucks and it comes with all the little like bells and whistles. And I didn't want to get started on a new technique and it not work. Then I'll be sad. Stopping midway. Hogwash. Yeah, let's do this. This will be a little easier to see. What's up, Rob? We have um, a cricket, but apparently you have to, like, call and, like, register it. I don't know. But it was a gift from Judy, and so I'm going to have to... Ask her what's up. Make sure you have your glasses on when you do this because these little parts. <laughs> That's why I like making really big ones, real big stencils. That's always fun, a little easier. These little cutouts get tedious. But at the same time, it's one of those things where you, you're just kind of doing it and you're not realizing what time it is. and It's kind of relaxing if you don't mind. You know? And if you find that your paper moves a lot, just be careful and put your hand, you know, right where you're cutting, put your finger right next to the line or next to the area that might move or that might tear. Just don't cut your finger. Yeah, don't cut your finger. Dutch people are mostly hard to convince. Of what? I'm not sure. Getting a group of people interested in a class. I feel like there's a lot of Dutch people that do poor art. I wonder if, um, oh, I'm going to butcher her name. Rensky? Rudududensky? What was her name? I don't, I don't know. I didn't ever say it. Lady Dutch Poor. Doesn't she live around there? I'm going to do this little stuff first. Hi, Barbara. Libby. You always nick your finger? I've never nicked my finger. Because you're really not, you're, you're, you're lightly cutting. You don't have to push very, dip, you know, you don't have to push very hard when you do this. 
and, and make sure you always use a, a new exacto blade and that way the risk of you ripping your paper or cutting yourself or lower because you're you don't have to push as hard and you're not straining and you know you get a nice sharp blade and it'll go around a curve um, you know you don't have to worry about that that's awesome Libby Polish and Kazkubish I'm 100% I said that wrong I always break off the tip of my knife so Jeff does that but he's like an advanced exactoer and when he gets a dull point on his since he only uses the tip just the tip please um he knows how to like break it off and keep on going well that's i'll use that because i on my highlights for my portraits um like in these corners of the eyes or the highlights of the eyes um you definitely need a nice sharp knife for when you're airbrushing to scratch off the paint where you want to highlight or um you know you want to make a an eyelash or a hairline and this is getting dull and it'll it'll show in the piece you know it'll it'll be uh, it'll be scratchy it won't be a nice flow of a line and I'll just I'll get a piece of wood and just stab it in there a little bit and like go to the left or right and it'll break it off and then you have that new little part I wouldn't try to cut with it because it's a little difficult because normally that part gets a little bent so then you won't have a true line Rinska. Got it. Kashubish. That sounds like I sneezed and then called somebody the B word. Kashubish. And it's spelled exactly like that. I was looking on your website. Most of his pictures must be of you, Erica. Funny story. <laughs> it's not the case. He has painted me twice. I'm pretty sure he was um, drawn to darker models, like with dark hair and... Um, they just have better features or like darker it's, features? It's not. It's a photograph. It, it's the photograph because I have multiple different. Um, and then the thing is a lot of those, a lot of my paintings are black and white. So you don't realize if they're blonde or brown, brunette or black hair. Or, it's just a contrast of a picture. It, it, it's, it's something that just stands out in that reference that I like to paint or that looks good in a painting I should say let me give y'all an example he loves whoop, this whoops sorry this dark right here and this right here and how deep this is well all this he stuff picks too. his photos based on the shadows Sorry about that, you guys. I'm moving y'all around. Oh, thank you, Libby. Exactly, Clara. He's looking for drama and good shadows. Something that has attention and a commanding presence and depth. He doesn't paint babies because they are so soft. They're they don't catch a lot of light for shadows. What's up, Lynn? My sister's in the house. Exactly, vamp. Contour above all else. So what is this thing you're cutting on? Oh, this is just a... Uh, cutting board it's self-healing this is not a very good one because when you cut into it store. when you cut into it it leaves the mark and but it's a good one it, won't. yeah a good one normally the green ones that are a little bit more expensive they're worth the money because when you cut into it it just 
it doesn't leave a mark and these leave a mark this one leaves a mark so if you're drawing or if you're you know coloring something in and you're using this you know or if you're cutting something and you want a smooth line you can feel these lines and it's just it's terrible so I I need to get another one I can't see any well I guess I can move that Nope. Okay. Um, so right now I am adding the this one. I would do that green one. No, that's, that's what $7. size is that? Oh, well, that's nine, nine by, 12. by twelve. I would do like twenty-four uh, by thirty-six. Yeah, twenty-four by thirty-six or this. Uh, thirty-six by forty-eight is a little bit excessive. Eighteen mm -hmm. by twenty-four. I would do that. Okay. I'm adding the cutting mats that he recommends that self heals really well to our Amazon affiliate. Let's see that. Yeah. Yeah, this one has four and a half stars and 517 reviews, so that's a good one. And when we get back from your birthday, we'll get you one of those. JB, okay. Alright, got that added. And these X-Acto blades are actually really good. Do you remember which ones it was? No, but I'm sure they'll be on order again. Oh, thank you, Wade. Len, how are you doing? How have you been? I haven't seen you in our family chat lately. How many of them was it? A hundred. For how many? For like $11 or 14 or something like that. This is 100 for 16. Are they dark? Yeah, it's those. Oh. oh, $10. Yeah. And see, I'm just, I'm literally just cutting where I drew. I'm not looking at the reference because I don't want to add anything. Bye, baby cakes. Um... The only time you really want to look at the reference is when, uh, if you're redrawing the picture. I might do a little, re like a little shadows on the board that we're pouring on. Recommendation on resin. Girl. Came to the right store. It's my sister. Oh. Well, you didn't say the name. Um, your roommate going to Japan is going to be amazing. You want to do a live resin pour with her before she leaves? Any recommendation on resin? I, you know, I have all of the resin. She ain't trying to pay attention. No, she's busy. Um, shoot me a message. Um. <clears throat> should paint it on this. Lynn, send me an email and remind me so I'm, that my assistant can send you out a kit. I bought this. Uh, Include colors. What do you call this? A mouse pad. Where's that picture at? I just don't know. See? There you go. She's going to Kyoto University of Foreign Studies for 11 months. I'm way sure I said that wrong. Mm. So you're gonna make this on some this? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint that. I need to paint that white. Oh. Or a different color. Here, you do that. I'll go paint it. Unless you want to do it on camera. But 
Libby says, Jeff, that is amazing. Okay. All right, she's going to go paint that white for me. Thank you very much. Um, you know what I could do? I have some, uh, some cardboard here. I could show you what it looks like if you just spray it. Um, let's see here. I have some black. And if you use our tips, you know this tip is a great tip to use. We call it the Klaus Thin. It's very um, very nice. Um, no. I'm using Sugar Paint by Iron Lack. This is a little bit different formula. Made from sugar cane. Um, it's supposed to be pretty, uh, um, what do you call it? Health, not healthy. It says a revolutionary healthy conscious formula with high performance. Made from sugar cane, not petroleum. I guess that's what... Um, and this is acrylic. It's acrylic paint. So, um, what you want to do, get you some of this. Uh, Multi-purpose. You don't want to... This is says super, but it's really not. Maybe I just don't spray enough. Anytime I've ever used super... Like you spray a little bit and you have to wait like 10 minutes for it to dry a little bit. And then you have to really peel it off. This stuff is, um, it's pretty light. So it, it's good for stuff like this. And I won't leave a residue behind. Um, you don't have to shake it up. But what you do, let's turn this over so we can spray on this. Turn your side over that you're, that you're, uh, Actually, that's what you would do, yeah. So if you want to paint this side, this is the side you're going to spray down. So this is the side that you would spray the adhesive on. Because if you spray this, then your image would be backwards and you'd have trouble blah, blah, blah. So let's just spray a little bit on here. So you get a little tack. Look at that. Look how fun that is. <laughs> um, like I said, this stuff is really light, so um, you don't need a, a lot. unless you really need a lot but it just does the job it keeps it down keeps it from moving um, plus if you're using airbrush airbrush will get under there and you'll have a fuzzy spot um, with this particular piece I want it to be dark um, if you're doing this to actually paint a portrait you literally want to spray this in as light as possible everything as light as like you, you just want to haze it. You just want to get a, a, a really nice, you know, if you have a transparent black like I have, I would suggest using that. Um, if you're using airbrush, use a really light transparent gray. And uh, But this, for what I'm going to do on this piece, I want all this to be just black. Like, because we're going to put resin over it. We're going to put, you know, color over it. So we want this to stand out. Um because if you do this, if you do this black, like we're going to do it and you try to, you know, <laughs> you try to add some shading, you try to 
come off a corner, it's it's going to be very stark, and you you can't you can't adjust anything. You can't you know tweak something because it's already solid black. If that makes any sense. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how that actually works. I'm going to do one side solid black and one side light. I'm going to do it with the spray paint. So we'll do this side a solid. And normally you would put some tape right here around these edges to protect that, but I'm not worried about that. All right, now we're going to do this side a very light, just a hint, so you kind of know where everything is at. Boys. I would not suggest using spray paint because of that reason. <laughs> Peel it up slow so you're not ripping any of your stencil off, breaking any parts. Rip it from all the angles. And as you can see, you have a very defined or a very light. What are you boys doing? And so with that said, Let's see here. If you wanted to finish this, this is already dry. Um, you have a very light, very light. You can you can extend. You can put shadows where there's you know. You see, this is just so dark that you have no room to to manipulate that, unless you like that, and you can also add you know shadow to that. But with this, is it's very, uh, very forgiving, I guess you could say. Thank you so much for teaching us how to do this. So excited about this, hey Maggie. Your board's ready if you want to. Get there. Y'all have to remind him to stay on task sometimes because he'll practice and his practice piece ends up being a full on production piece on like a piece of cardboard. I didn't do that. I didn't do this pieces over here for some reason. Well, this kind of gets you in the mood. This is always fun little uh, warm up. You know? You see, there's that part I was talking about, that little shadow and the hump. Can't forget about the hump shadow. Happens every time you walk away, Vamp. Remember that. What's that? She said, walk away for just a second and ooh. And she was like, also, apparently I forgot how to type while I was gone. Miss Griffin said, thank you for sharing this technique. Ocean says, love this. Stick this on your board. We do miss. Let's do them. So you can get a lot of these little hint shadows that are that make an eye look like a real eye by just by smearing it. You don't want to. You're not trying to. You're not trying to draw these on because they're it's a curve and then a slight, you know, it's not a solid line. People will draw these lines on and make it look like, you know. Well, then you look old. Yeah, I go older person, possibly.
JJ said, Jeff's practice pieces make my week-long efforts look like stick figure drawings. <laughs> Ms. Bouvier says, thank you, Jeff, for sharing your God-given talent. This is a lot of practice. And you're welcome, Hi, Karen. and thank you. Normally, I color in. I'll color in the eye first. I won't. I won't make it super solid up here, but I'll color in the eye. Just so that when you do start putting down shadows and eyelashes, that they'll go over that. So it, you know, you're you're literally covering up what's supposed to be covered up. That's fun. Lisa wants to know, workable fixative used before, after, or both when Jeff does his purses slash passport holders? Um, kind of both. Anytime you want to seal something in, use a fixative. Wade says, yes, thanks for sharing. I missed this part in art school. Oh, I missed all the parts in art school. <laughs> My art teacher, I don't know how he dealt with me. A shout out to Mr. Steven Sell. Um, Mr. Gribben, Gribble. Uh, Mr. Boge. All those art teachers of mine that put up with my craziness. She's trying to stop me, you guys. It's true. I don't understand what why we have to stop. Why are we stopping? Because you want to do your actual art piece. Well, I'm doing an actual art piece. What did I do this round for? <laughs> That's fun. I wish I could put more detail in it. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to need that. Um, probably. Or maybe I'll just get some paper. All right. Let's move this up, you guys. Sorry for the fast movement. You guys, if you really want a really nice... Um, camera that's inexpensive. I got it on Amazon. It's this Logitech, this one here. It's, um, um, it's a 1080, but it has a wide angle. Like this is only two feet probably from my my desk. That's about two and a half, two and a half, almost three. Hands? Are they both yeah, it's almost, it's, it's a little up there. Inches. What What's did you say feet? you needed to get? You don't have any shoes on. Um, I need to get uh, paper. Yeah, so I can. Masking? No, just regular paper. I'll just, I'll just use regular paper. All right, so what I thought would be fun, you can make a couple of them if you want. You know what I didn't do? That's what I didn't do right here. Hold up two minutes. You want me to add for you real quick? I can I can work on this if I wanted to, right? Okay. All right, so I need I need to cut this out. This is what I didn't get. I want to make sure I do whatever I've told you guys I'm doing. So cut these guys out. Unless you're comfortable with just freehanding it, you can freehand it all you want. But these lines are pretty important, and if you forget them, then you might forget to do them and. This is definitely one thing that makes a difference on how shadows are and, and, and why a picture looks like a picture, in, in my opinion. 
Yeah, sorry for the wobble. The camera is attached to the desk, so anytime there's movement, it's going to... Yeah, I apologize about that. Working on it. Um, I think I'm just going to get... Uh, Basically, Clara. A vase that I can just put down to the floor. All right, so what would be fun, I thought... Is that we can make, you know, one one up here, maybe one down here to kind of give it, you know, maybe a couple sirens in the water, mm. or no? Mm -mm. I think the face is too big for that. Mmm. Okay. I like the centered one. I know you're gonna make it look amazing. I may be his biggest fan slash stalker. We could do some paintbrush on here. So now he's just mm. blocking off the other areas so that when he sprays the spray paint, it doesn't get on the white canvas. Make sure you tape it down and don't just lay it there because it will move. Spray paint will get all up in there. It will go under here and you'll have a line. You'll have an overspray line that will drive you insane. Go see in the little areas that. You can also put these underneath here so you don't have to use so much tape. And that way it'll that will guard that. Pup 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 pro tip. There you go. Or the tape, so use it or lose it, buddy. Use All right, it so we are good on this. Use it. No, what? <gasps> I don't need all that. What are you gonna do with that? All right, make sure your stencil is down. You just tap, tap, tap. We're going to make this dark, right? That's what we're doing. Well, they are the dark parts. No, but we're not going to do any artwork on it. How come? Because they're going to get resin over. Mm. You just put clear resin. I didn't know Bowie was over here. Um, at least it's sugar. So. All right, now take your excess off. We're making faces. Be careful not to rip your stencil. Your stencil. And you notice I didn't spray any spray adhesive. I just used what was on there. Standard paper is going to give you about a three, four if you're lucky use situation. And you have your little stencil. If you want, you can put it on the same paper there so you don't have to worry about anything sticking to it. And put it up so you have a backing to it. 
Um, I guess we could do some like watercolor-ish or uh, I don't know. What do you think? You can ink it. Do some uh, ink, but uh. Sorry, North Carolina. Don't you know we're live? All right, so. I don't know if this is necessary. I don't know if I really want to do this. What's happening? Get into this and start getting all the details. Now you're about to. It's already happening. Well, I think I'm just going to do a little bit. What do we got here? Okay, black. So I'm going to put a little bit of this turquoise in here. We're going to make some wash, basically, is what we're going to make. What are you doing? All right, what I did is I just put some of this, uh, this turquoise, phthalo, into some water, very washed out. Um, this still might be too dark. Um, I normally have a piece that I practice on. Yeah, you can tell that's just that's way too dark. So I love I love how this is washed out. It's it's pretty dark. I don't really think it's going to be that dark, but we could do this. Hi, Claire. Have an awesome day. Okay, now you're just showing off. I'm not. It looks really good on that gray. Well, see, that's what that's what this looks good. Like this, um, just doing very light. You're you're just doing very light. Um, basically, painting what you see. You're just. I'm painting just these dark areas. I'm, I'm literally painting a line, a little dark part there. You're just layering this is what you're doing. So then you could go back over it. And that, see, that helps too if you want to get some. Uh, Thanks, Carl. You want to use your charcoal. Charcoal. But yeah, I want this to be really loose, like this, like because she's going to be underwater. She's going to have. Um, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid this is going to be just really dark. Put more water in it. light. Let's just go with this. We'll just go with this with this color here. I'm trying not to step on this table <laughs> to get up in my chair. And if you're wondering what paint that was, it's golden. Patello. Turquoise. Turquoise.
We're gonna need to go. All right, so I'm gonna, change. I'm gonna just start in the dark areas, like I said. Oh yeah, this is light. I don't know if this is even gonna stick to this. It's gesso. I didn't sand it. It should be fine. You didn't sand it? Because mm -mm. I knew you were gonna do something, and I didn't want it to. You might need to sand it. Won't that make it smoother? No, it'll give it some tooth. Right. So, what grit do you want? You, you, we, we always sand these, right? Like. What grit do you want? Probably a 400. You have some over here. Or no? Look at that. Like, why would that? That's crazy. Oh, you have some right there. <clears throat> this is 220. Now this is going to scratch this off. I thought you were just spray painting it. Well, I did too, but you, then you said let's do some art, so I figured you'd just... Uh, we're going to have to go over this anyways with Debbie, apparently you do need to sand gesso for it because it was an acrylic, nope, a resin pour that we spray painted over. So, right, it is an absorbent ground, but this is a spray gesso over a resin pour, so it kind of changes the properties a little bit. No, I didn't take off that sandpaper, did it? Oh, uh, spray paint? Spray paint. No, I'm just gonna... made it lighter, but that's all right. Inventing new stuff over here. Hopefully that'll work, I don't know. I guess I've never painted on this before, I don't know. Kind of the same reason why alcohol inks work so well on it. Where's that? Where's that piece of paper that I had right here? Why are you keep taking it? You can it to me. So the reason why he has this paper is to prevent drips, and so he can put his hand down without scraping it or possibly transferring color. No one likes prepping their stuff. I'm, I'll put it off forever. You can also, if you like, take your, uh, Take your rag and lighten that area up. Do you need a damp one? No, I think it'll take it off if I do that. This just kind of moves it around, makes it a little lighter. I don't mind that. I don't mind having areas that have this color because we're just going to go darker anyway. So this just kind of gives it a tone underneath. What are they, mid-tones? My friend Rudy, he uh, he does this kind of uh, painting, but he, he uses uh, acrylic, like he uses all the, all the tones. He'll make his colors, which I don't understand how he does. He's a tattoo artist. He's used to the tones. 
you guys can't see this, but he's, every time his paintbrush comes off the, the image, he's looking at this. We tried to strap a GoPro to his face one time. It made me dizzy editing it. It was such a bad idea. No, this is not alcoholic. This is watered down. Um, Golden. Golden high flow acrylics. But you could do this with alcohol inks. You would just have to seal in your layers after each um, tone. I think this dries pretty well. So once you see, once you go, once it dries and you hit back over it and just let it, you get a little bit darker. Right, but I was talking about for alcohol ink. She has to do it. Uh -huh. alcohol ink. And I'm really wanting this to be um, very, very, very like this, so that when you do put. Um, your resin over it, this does stand out a lot more. Jeff is the same way, Wade. What's that? He said, it took me three hours to clean, prep, pick my colors, all before I could actually start painting. That just mm -hmm. means you're very thorough and prepared. There's nothing wrong with that. You could totally do watercolor like this, for sure. This is, yeah. This is all kind of like watercolor. It's watered down, already super fluid paint. See, that's that spot I'm talking about. This is that stuff where you you really you really want to do this you really want to make this highlight make this shadow to where it looks like the lip is is gumming down into itself this little part here is always fun And you guys, this is stuff that works for me. I'm not telling you this is how you're supposed to do it. I'm not telling you if you don't do it this way, then you're wrong and there's a right way and this is the only way. This is the way I like to do it. And I'm going to have to... Add a drop. No, I want this to dry because I want to take. I want to. I want to get this a little bit lighter. I want to wash the. I want to like wash it with it. That's awesome, Diane. Good for you. Basically, that's exactly Miss Bouvier what's going on. He's just painting in the shadows, but he's building the color from light to dark. Since he already has the darkest parts done out with the spray paint, now all he's doing is coloring in the light areas around the dark parts because now he already has proportion set, so it's a little easier to do a painting because you don't have to worry about everything being in the right spot. See, this is funny. This is why it's hard for me to film my stuff because I don't I don't have anything set until I start doing it. And then by the time I start doing it, then it's already started and I don't want to get a camera out and do it, Kim. Um but this is what I really want to do here. Do you want that tabletop easel? Um, no, I don't, I'm not gonna. What's one? Is this the light one? Yeah. This one I just ended. Do I need to put something here to catch it? Um, 
Yeah, I guess. Just here, I got it. Natalie, shoot me an email with a picture of how it's set up, and um, I'll be glad to take a look at it and see how we can help you improve it. Um, you can totally, as long as it's set evenly, just sand it, paint it, and do another one right over it. That's basically what we're doing with this one. What's up, cats? You need your spritzer? I don't know. So he's got this propped up at like a 45 degree angle. Yeah. What? Just yet. Look how it's spreading into the water mm -hmm. like alcohol ink would do. You want this back there? blank rag. Mm. I don't know if you're going to do your whole wash Right now, I would be getting out the uh, the heat gun. No, remember it it messed up the sound last time for some reason. I thought that was Bowie. No, I turned on the heat gun, and it hmm. that's what happened. It like something went crazy with it. I don't know. People are like, what is he doing? Now they're just talking about that it's so cool. This is so good. Many things. This is why, like, I, uh, it's hard for me to, to let people watch when I do paintings like this because of the process. And I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> it just kind of comes to me and I, I, I have these moments where I just, this is what I see and it's just a part of the process. So it's like, um, until you start putting in detail and highlights and low lights and gold and all that fun stuff, like it just looks like kind of a mess, which I understand if you think that and you're, you know, you think, what would you do that for? And I don't know. I just, it's something that I see. Happy accidents. Do you remember this is a a siren? Ocean, he is super good at visualizing. Baby Kate says we appreciate you letting us into your personal art space. You're welcome. Hi Nita.
So here in a little bit, I gotta go get Bowie a, um, a short leash. Can't be a retractable one, so. Just heads up. Probably take both the boys with me, though. To go get a leash? I can't be a retractable. Well, what time is the class? What is it, four? Yeah, but I don't want to take that. This is what I love about this this paint. You see how it just makes that shadow. Cuz you just you're just painting over over a layer and it's just darkening in that just a little bit more. It almost does the work for you. So you're not, you know, you're not overdoing it. forgot about that. It's so funny. I was literally just going to like <laughs> do a spray paint version of this. <laughs> and you guys got me all hyped up on on doing this. Like just doing this for you guys like got me all like well hell, I want to do it like this now. And I've been really really wanting to do um a piece, you know, one of my art pieces. I really, uh, I really start missing that, that, that medium, that fine art stuff that takes a little while. It's so fun. I know it doesn't look like her, but this is one sexy siren. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I appreciate y'all.
and I could go in with some uh, with some black. Like I can get this a little bit darker. I'll probably put some black in it, maybe some purple just to darken it. Um, but this is kind of how I I like to do uh, when I try to make airbrush um, portraits like this, like to make it look like it's airbrush, is I'll start out super light, even lighter than this. Um, and just keep adding darker and darker. This is the thing I always tell B is paint what you see. It's kind of a, a weird thing, but you see that? Just paint that. Give that a little notch. You know, there's one here. Just give it a little, just give it a little notch. All right, let's put a little uh, purple in there. We're gonna put, we're gonna mix a little bit of this in here to make it a little darker. I've never, I don't think I've ever said dioxine. I never really knew how to say that. <laughs> Um, Libby Nutter, I, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I love doing that. The more detail, the more realistic, the more hyper-realistic, you know. If that's a problem, that's a good problem to have. I, I always say. I'm just going to put a little bit of purple in here to darken this up. But remember, you guys, I'm going to put resin over this. So we're going to make like an ocean pour over this. Ooh, that just made it like a dark blue. And I'm not going to use this brush anymore. I'm going to put this down. I wish I had a thing of water. Give me one second, y'all. I'm going to get... Oh, you know what? I've got some water right here. Put this far away from my laptop. Possibly can. Oh yeah, I got this soap the other day. I haven't really used it. Some uh, brush soap. Take care of your brushes and they will take care of you. Let's get a little bit more detail brush. They always say wash these off. These are brand new brushes. I haven't used these. Oh yeah, you guys. Um, the uh, My Label Whore knockoff clutches, I have about four or five of them. They're going to go up on the website today. Um, so they will be available. Not sure how much I'm going to sell them for because some of them are a little bit, some of them are a little less detail, some of them are a little bit more detail, but um, we'll see how much I sell them for, but they're definitely going to go up today. This is good stuff. Thank you, Ocean. Yeah, that's a, Debbie, this is a great shadow color. Like a lot of people try to do when they do airbrush, 
they use black and it's that's not a good that's not a good time right there you don't want to do that this made putting this purple in this thalo made a super like gnarly like a blue almost like a and if i were to put a little bit more thalo in there it would make it that teal amazing teal let's see what we got here this is where you start using your your rag to dab a little so that you can kind of control this dark areas a little bit easier These eyebrows are just crazy, right? Always remember there's a little separation right here from the eye and the eyelashes. I should probably put a little darker color there, but you kind of see what I'm got going on here. Got a shadow. A little dark area. Always love doing that shadow. You know, I wish I wouldn't have made this shadow so hard right here, so um, so defined. So I really, I enjoy making this nose shadow. It makes it really, it gives it that that nose look. I guess you could say. <laughs> And I'm literally just tapping that. I'm trying not to draw the line. I'm just kind of tapping that so that it doesn't give it such a defined line. Normally I'd be getting the airbrush out if I was doing something like this. And uh, filling in these shadows. Like now would be the time I would stop, get the airbrush out and put some detail in there. But I don't want to put any de I don't want to put any anything in here like that. 
Hey, Amanda Bangs is here. Oh, and a little one. She brought a mini with her. Uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be doing this more often. You guys are you don't even have to pay me for a mad art skill lesson. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it here. I don't I don't mind I don't I don't mind doing it like this. I don't you know, I don't it's less stressful. It's less it's not like teaching, it's just doing. I could probably spray some fixative over this and put some white down. Let's try that. Let's put some fixative on here. I got some workable fixative right here. And we can use like the colored pencils on this. Let's put some up here and see what it looks like. What it'll do is it'll just make it look nice and bright. window yeah this stuff dries really fast too I gotta remember I'm in a little area here I need to close up these paints or else I'll get them everywhere let's see let's get some um, What color are Sirene's eyes? Maybe green, huh? I'm really afraid to turn on the... Uh... Yeah, they do a little stank a little bit. Green one. What's, what do you make her eyes green? A little light green in there. Let's go with, uh, with this teal. This is the one that Bowie chewed on. Got a hold of that. I can tell I probably should have let this dry a little bit more or put the heater on it. Uh, it should be all right. Oh, 
I wonder if it's because it's plugged into the same. I bet if I unplugged it. Should I try that? You'll plug it into like the wall. Because all these plugs are plugged into the same thing. Two different colors. Oh, this is light green. This is apple green. this this is apple green this is light green yeah apple green looks a lot better I'm just doing like stippling. I don't know if you guys can even see that. It's fun. All right, I'm gonna, this is driving me crazy. I can't stand it. Not have this. It's funny because this is the only thing plugged into this. Like this is. Oh, maybe not. Aha! I see. Said the rat. Aha. Sorry if I'm shaking that, you guys. I apologize. I 
All right, let's try this. Hopefully this doesn't mess that up. I can barely drag this over here. <laughs> How's that? Alright, so let's try to do this. This is what I would be doing with the airbrush. Somebody said they eat sirens for lunch. <laughs> and I'm not even looking at my reference, you guys. That's the most important thing. Look at your reference when you're doing this. <laughs> I should be putting a, like I can put this down and then put fixative over it make it darker put it down put fixative over it See, do you see what I mean by I, if I wanted to, if I if I knew I was going to do this like this, I should have done it lighter, so that these eyelashes weren't so defined, and 
I can kind of make them my own. I normally would have like a, a, a smudge tool for this, but I'm being lazy and I don't want to get it out. <laughs> Sorry if I'm not talking to you guys or answering questions. And see, the darker you get her, the darker she gets. She doesn't look so pretty and innocent. You put a little bit more darker here, a little bit more darker there. Make sure a little bit more sinister. Get rid of that mermaid look. And literally all I'm doing, I'm just going inside of this dark part that I have and just putting um, charcoal, basically smearing it out from it so that, you know, I'm not drawing directly on the piece, on the, on the white parts. I think I might get out one of those pins that are those uh, smudge pins just to kind of show you what those can do. And see when you have these these lighter colors down you put a little, something a little over over it a little darker. You, it just totally adds to it. It just gives it more definition. That's what I love about it.
I'm digging it. I think I can dig it. Thank you, Anita. I appreciate that. That was a fun piece. That was really, that was really tricky, because uh, those dogs are very wire hairy, <laughs> you could say. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put some. I don't, I don't know if I really need to. I probably could put a little fixative down. The only, the only problem with putting fixative down after you've done these pencils is it stays. You're not, you're not getting rid of those pencil lines. It could be good, that could be bad. <laughs> oh. See if we can put some colored pencil in there. I don't know. I've never used fixative with colored pencil. I think I'll just do like. You can kind of get some colored pencil in there. It's white. Not too much though. A little bit. But, but you can always grab the airbrush. Get some white in there, some highlights. I'm gonna take the paint pan and get in there where the real dark, the dark, where the opaque highlights are. Yeah, that's really not making any difference. So, and this is what's fun about these paint pens is these are um, Posca. Is you, you can put it on there and then dab it and then kind of smear it and it'll give it almost like a highlight effect. So let's just do these guys first. See, it gives you a little highlight effect there. Maybe just grab, use this lightly, touch it. It'll kind of blend that in. I think the, uh, what do you call that? That's what's really doing that is uh, this fixative. It's not letting it like lay flat. It's almost like on the surface. <laughs> I 
<coughs> Whoopee! <laughs> I just can't sneeze sometimes. Oh, well, thank you.